Hi everyone. Today I'm going to talk to you about a very important concept in observational painting, and that is to use values for the effect of light. I've had a hard time understanding how to control values and why we would do this at all. My paintings seemed very flat, even though I picked the right values. And what was the missing part was the effect of light. And we can do this by compressing the values. What do I mean by compressing values? Well, compressing the values is similar to how we focus our exposure with the camera. The question is, do we expose for the shadows or for the lights? Let's look at these diagrams first. Above you can see the usual value scale and how we know it. We have got the whole value range here. And now let's look at the second one. Here the lights are very compressed. And what we mean by that is that we expose the scene for the darks or the shadows first. So that we can see and paint the details in the shadows. And the lights are compressed so that we have no modeling of form in the light side. And by doing so, we can get the bright light effect. When the darks are compressed, we model the forms on the light side first. So we have this whole value range here. And by doing so, shadows tend to become very dark. And while we have a contrasty effect of light, most of the painting becomes very dark and moody because all these darks are compressed. And you will see an example later. But let's look at the fourth example first. Here we have a bracketing of values. And by that we mean that we limit the range of values. In the scale above we have a full value range, but here we limit it to a certain degree. And we can say that the darkest dark is the value 8 and the lightest light is the value 3. And by doing so, we can easily compare values between the darkest and lightest value. This is especially useful in quite overcast lighting, where we don't have extreme darks or lights. Now let's look at some master paintings that employ these value compressions. So the first painting is the painting by Rembrandt. As you can see, the values on the left side have a lot of form, detail and a lot of value gradations. Here you can see all these value gradations and the form. And this is because Rembrandt painted the full range of values on the light side and compressed the values on the dark side. And this is accomplished by painting the lights first and then the darks. All these darks have no details at all. We have a little bit of bounce light, but really no details. Here we have only blacks. Now let's look at this painting by John Singer Sargent. We can see that the painting is way brighter than the Rembrandt painting. And even though we have the light effects on the Rembrandt painting, we have it here as well. And the difference is the overall brightness of the painting. This is because Sargent would think about painting the whole range of values in the darks first and then compress the light side. As you can see in the light side, we have no forms or detail. No forms, no detail. 
Basically, they are just patches of white with some glow added to them. And if you have time, study Sargent's watercolor paintings, where he painted the shadow side and used the light compression a lot. This is really a study of bounced light and lights in shadow. Look at all these details in the shadows. And again, no form and detail on the light side. Even the stones here have really no form. This is a painting by Jules Bastion Lepage. He used a lot of bracketing of values. We can clearly see that his value range is limited to a range of values from approximately 3 to 9 and there are no extreme lights and no extreme darks. In a way, these values are the most accurate comparing to the values in real life. And that's why it looks so realistic and it just looks like we are seeing the real thing. And this is something the camera cannot do because it absorbs the light in a different way. So now that you looked at these examples, I encourage you to go outside and try to paint the effect of light by compressing values and also by bracketing values to see the correct values in overcast light. And if you like the videos, please like and subscribe to our channel. And if you have any questions, please leave them below in the comments. We are starting to release videos weekly now, so stay tuned and see you next week.